I was also ordained at the high water mark of Christendom. In 1978 was the high water mark in terms of attendance in the Episcopal Church, the year I was ordained. And I have never in the life of this church and in my ministry participated when the church was not marked in some way by decline. What's important about St. Simon and St. Jude is the fact that in one way or another, they were outsiders. Their devotion to Christ marked them as aliens in a strange land, as persons whose Christian identity did not fit comfortably with the surrounding culture. They belonged to Christ, not to the world, and the world hated them for that. Christ came to transform the world, to overcome the world, and the world has hated Christ's call to another way. That's where I think we find ourselves as the church today. Like the first days of the church, we exist on the margins of society. Although nearly half of, the, of Americans claim to be Christian, only about 10% of Americans are in church on any given Sunday. And only about 30% of Americans have any current religious affiliation. 25% of Americans say they have no religious belief or affiliation. And 8% of formerly practicing Christians say they are done with religion. Those of us who show up week after week are in a very distinct minority. More importantly, it seems to me, much of what passes for Christianity today seems to have little relationship to the love of God as revealed in Jesus Christ. The airwaves are full of harsh and condemnatory words from Christians about neighbors and strangers, words that Jesus would certainly rebuke. As our presiding bishop said at the recent meeting of the Executive Council, if it's not about the love of God, it's not Christianity. If it doesn't look like Jesus, it's not Christianity. He also said, while it may be tempting to despair and search for ways to return to a church that Episcopalians believe existed in the past, or perhaps that we knew existed in the past, if the church concentrates on making and forming disciples who truly live the way of Jesus, we won't have time to worry about average Sunday attendance. That will take care of itself. If we continue to navel gaze, then we won't survive, and we probably shouldn't. If our concern is being the church of the 1950s, maintaining institutional reality for the sake of the institution, then maybe we don't need to continue. But if we Episcopalians are concerned about keeping Jesus at the center of our lives, then that's a church that has a reason to exist and will have a future. It's hard for us, I think, in a world that has nominally always been Christian, that we grew up in when everybody went to church, when in some parts of the country the first question was, what church do you go to? It's hard for us to recognize how the world has changed. But Christendom is over. Nobody asks anymore, first thing, what church do you go to? And by the way, the way of Jesus has never been a supporter of current culture or government. We've only kidded ourselves about that. The way of Jesus is not the Republican Party at prayer. It is not the Democratic Party at prayer. It is not any political group, old or new. The way of Jesus is not aligned with the NRA or the ACLU, or even, my friends, with the Holy Catholic Church, which is an institution. The way of Jesus has always been moving toward the creation of a new heaven and a new earth. And the Holy Catholic Church is only holy if it's the body of Christ. 
if it is the way of Jesus lived out in the lives of the men and women who claim it. As the psalmist put it in our psalm today, God's rule has no frontier. There is no edge to the kingdom of God. There is no place where it starts or stops. It is all of creation, the whole of the cosmos, and it includes all who follow the way. All who follow the one whose way of being is an offense to the way that things are. We are invited now to stand out from the culture, to stand apart from the culture, to stand for the way things are supposed to be, not the way things are. We are invited to trust in the presence and the leading of the Advocate, the Spirit of God who is here, right here, right now, and to testify to the good news of the love of God in Christ. I love that word, testify. It means stand up and tell the truth. That's what it means. Stand up, tell the truth. To testify, to testify, means we have to be among people. We cannot testify in our closets. We cannot testify in our homes. We have to be in our communities. We have to be out there standing up, standing out from the culture. We have to be seen and heard. We have to be among people who know us, whom we know, who can hear us. We have to be voices for the love of God, followers of the way of Jesus. That's the work God is inviting us into. It may seem like a lost cause. It may seem like a lost cause, but my friends, the love of God is never exhausted. The love of God is never exhausted. It is here, right here, right now. So may we, as followers of the way, as heirs of St. Jude, the patron of lost causes. May we claim the high calling that is ours in Jesus, and may we raise our voices wherever we are in proclaiming the love of God. May it be so.